This is a compression fitting and if you've ever used one of these then you know that after you've tightened the fitting it's always nice just to put a little bit of an extra turn on the fitting just to make sure that it's actually watertight. But how tight do you actually need to go? Well today with the help of a few components I'm going to make a test to see how tight you need to make a compression fitting to make it completely watertight. Okay, so there is a slight contradiction here, and that is that the test assumes that we're going to be using water. However, the test medium I'm going to be using is air. Now, the pipe and fittings don't care if it's air or water inside, or to what pressure it gets to, and I'll still be able to see if there's a pressure drop. So, simply put, for this test, it's not going to make any difference if it's water or air. We'll still get the same result. So I'm going to keep things simple then. I'm going to use a piece of 15mm tube. I'm going to use an old valve on this end because it's got a Schrader connection on. And I'll attach this compression fitting to the middle of the pipe with the pressure gauge attached as an indicator to see if the pressure's holding or if the pressure's actually dropping. And then finally, I'll add this compression cap fitting. I'll tighten it up bit by bit to see how much pressure is required to get a satisfactory tightness test. The valve itself just simply connects via a push fit fitting and it slides on the end of the pressure gauge and straight onto the copper tube. Before I put this pressure gauge into this fit in here, I need to reduce this down a size. So I'm going to use a reducing bush, which goes from half inch to quarter inch BSP. Now to seal the thread on this pressure gauge in this reducing bush, I'm going to use a pipe sealing cord. This one just happens to be Loctite 55. The cord itself has a waxy feel to it, and it's a really good compound for connecting thread to thread connections. Okay, so that's it then, nice and simple. Pressure gauge in the middle. I've just got to add the end cap onto the end of the copper tube here, tighten that up bit by bit, and pressurise at the same time using the compressor. Just for clarity, I'm going to be using a copper olive for this test. I'll tighten it up finger tight to begin with, and as you can see, it's still really loose and it slips on and off the pipe. I'm going to be using this small air compressor, which goes up to about 8 bar in pressure, which is more than sufficient for the test I'm going to do. Initially, I'm going to set it to measure in bar, and I'm going to set it to 3 bar to begin with. And then of course I'll attach the compressor to the pipework. And then of course with no surprise if I start charging the pipework with pressure we'll just lose the fitting off the end of the pipe. Now I can get it to stay on a little bit longer if I hold it in place. But the pressure gauge only really goes up to around about half a bar. And in fact it doesn't even register on the analogue gauge. Okay, so clearly it's time to start tightening this compression fitting up. Now, originally I was going to use this torque meter to measure the force required, but this meter here has a minimum setting of 30 newtons, which is way in excess of what I need. So I'm going to be switching over to a manual torque wrench. So this manual torque wrench has a range of 5 newtons all the way up to 25 newtons, and that's more than enough for this test. Okay, so here's the plan then. I'm going to put a mark on the pipe, the nut and the cap, and that way I'll be able to see visually how far the nut's turned, as well as how much force is being applied. So the end cap's finger tight and that's going to be my starting position. And that's about as tight as I can go and you can see it's only moved just a couple of millimetres and it's still loose. Now I'm going to apply just a small amount of force with the torque wrench. So at this point it's still loose but it has gone tighter obviously and the nut has now moved around about a quarter of a turn. And for good measure I'll just put a little bit of pressure in just to see where we're up to. And the cap shoots off a lot further now because the olive grips the pipe a little bit more and we're able to build up a little bit more pressure behind the fitting. So I'll tighten it up a little bit more and just for clarity this is actually set at 5 newtons. So the fitting is now tight and the end cap's moved around probably around about 15mm or a quarter of a turn from the original starting position. And I can with a bit of effort still turn the fitting so it's not too tight at all. So it's time to put a bit more pressure in. You can see from the gauge that it's not watertight, but it's only been turned just a small amount, about a quarter of a turn so far. And I'll add a little bit of leak detecting fluid so you can visualise the rate of the leak. So knowing that I've got a bit of a leak, and knowing that this end cap isn't as secure as it could be, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this up to its maximum pressure, which is around about 8 bar pressure. 
hopefully this won't come off the end of the pipe because it'll go through my wall. I'm going to see if this fitting stays in place. That's now set at 8 bar pressure and there's zero pressure in the system at the minute and it won't take long to fill because there isn't much pipe work but let's just see how much pressure this can take. At around about 5.5, 6 bar pressure the fitting started moving up the pipe so the olive isn't compressed enough or tight enough to withstand much more pressure so I'll keep going and see if we can get it to push off the end of the pipe. Surprisingly, I'm at 8.25 bar of pressure and the fitting has stayed on the end of the pipework. Just going to see if we can tap the fitting back onto the pipe where it was. And as you can see, it's still actually movable by hand. So it's time to see if we can make this water and air tight now. The end cap's now moved round around about 20 mil from its starting position, or just under half a turn, something like that. And I still haven't hit five newtons yet, so I'm going to put some pressure in now and see if that makes it air and water tight. So I've had the rig pressurised at 7.25 bar pressure and if you look at the gauge you can see that it's actually dropped somewhat. Now if you look at the pressure gauge we've also got a drop on there as well. And I've tested this end cap fitting with the leak detecting fluid as you've seen and it didn't have any signs of leaks on there. So lo and behold I come across to these two fittings here and these with the leak detecting fluid on show a leak and they need tightening up. Now before you say it I don't know what these are talked up to so I'm just going to tighten these up with the spanner and just to make sure that they're watertight as well. These compression fittings have been tightened up, so I'll just put some leaky testing fluid on these. And you should be able to see that these are now air and water tight. Back to the test then, I just want to see how far off 5 newtons we are with the torque wrench. I still haven't got to 5 newtons yet, so I'm going to have to call it. And I'm going to say this is somewhere between 3 and 5 newtons. And the cap's actually turned half a turn around the pipe. And that's sufficient to hold back 8 bar pressure. OK, so that's it for this video. Unfortunately, the force measurement was a bit of a disaster. But as you can see, when it comes to your compression fitting, you don't really need to turn it more than about half a turn from finger tight to make the fitting completely water and air tight. Now, there are associated problems with over tightening compression fittings. And if you'd like to see a video of the effect of what happens when you over tighten the compression fitting, then drop me a comment and I'll continue with the video. And I'll put some more pressure on this end cap and show you what happens. But until then, that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.